market is up. Uh, but I don't, you know, just being in where I am as far as my profession and where I came from, uh, you know, there were, there were a lot of uh, cuts on the project side. I mean, we're talking 80 to 90 percent of our budget was being cut. So, wow. Wow. yeah, it's a uh, it's an interesting time um, when you when you compare the market and look at where it's going now versus where we are as an economy. I don't know so, if that answers your question, but. So are you more of a, your strategy right now going forward, are you more, um, you, you invest in short term or are you doing more long, long term investments? So I shifted uh, my train of thought. I'm, I'm doing more more long term now. Um, when I say long term, I mean, I'm, I'm buying more stocks. Um, buying some of those companies that really got distressed and whose prices were, were dumped during this uh this time with COVID and, and layoffs and cutbacks and, and things like that. So, um, you know, I've, I've shifted, you know, I used to do a lot of short-term investing. Um, I used to trade options, um, which were short-term options, which, which um, you know, we could talk about, mm -hmm. uh, but I used to trade them on the short-term. So now I've kind of shifted it over to long-term. So I buy more shares of companies, you know, as I get paid every, uh, two weeks, I'll take a portion of that and buy companies. Right? And so as I started buying companies, um, my thinking and doing my analysis and looking at the, uh, the fundamentals of the company, I'm expecting these, these companies to recover. So these aren't, uh, I'm not rolling in the dice on uh, penny companies or companies that haven't been around a while or companies that haven't proven themselves. These are companies that were either once blue chip or have a strong financial, uh, strong financial statements, uh, and but they've just been a victim of what's going on right now. And so, uh, purchasing those securities and those shares, and just kind of holding on to them and waiting for you know recovery. Mm -hmm. So how do you go about as a trader? You know, you say long term. Are you, first of all, are when you say long term, is this like a six month deal, three month deal? Uh, year long, year and a half, like what is your exit strategy when it comes to that? And then two, like when you, how are you going about finding these bargain basement, um, you know, what you call blue chips or bargain basement companies to, to, to kind of invest in? Because like as a trader for myself, I would probably go into the app, you know, I'll probably think about the companies that I know off the top of my head, like Facebook or Google, but you know, these companies are, have been around, they, they have success and you know, they're going to continue to be here, but they're, they're still trading at a high dollar. But how do you find those, you know, $10 or $12 or something under $50 type bargain type blue chip companies? How do you go about finding those things? Um, so I guess answer your first question, what do I consider long-term? Um, you know, I'm looking at more of the recovery of the stock versus a time frame. You know, typically if you say long-term, you're, you're talking at least a year that will get you over that, uh, you know, paying capital gains tax, right? So if you hold something for 365 days, you can kind of skate that, that, uh, capital gains tax. Uh, and so I guess I start out there with the year, um, but there's not really a time frame when I'm, when I'm purchasing these companies, you know, I'm, you know, I take money that I'm, that I would typically put in a savings account or store away, um, and then just buy stock and I'm, I'm, I'm waiting. All right. So it's a waiting game. Um, it's, you know, buying stock and investing in companies. It's just like uh, real estate, right? you you'll never lose in real estate. If um, if you don't have to still sell before you want to. And so if you purchase these stocks at distress levels at uh, really low discounted prices and you, you don't need the money, um, you just kind of let it sit there until it recovers till you get, um, uh, either, you know, I'll look at it and kind of determine, uh, what does a full recovery look like and can it come out of into a full recovery, whether it's pre COVID or pre five years ago. Uh, and if it took a dip for some other reason. So um, I kind of look at um, over the last five or 10 years, see what has happened. Uh, a lot of what has happened because of COVID. So I'll start there. I'll say, I'm gonna buy these shares and I want to at least get to the mark where it was uh, pre-COVID. So that, that's kind of my thinking as far as purchasing in the long term. Now, 
I say that if I wake up the next morning and, and the levels are pre-COVID, I may sell. So uh, like I said, there's no, I don't have really have a, uh, a time frame when I say long-term, uh, but I guess for me, when I say long-term, I'm buying shares versus, uh, you know, dealing in options. Uh, and so yeah, I'll, I'll hold them until I get to, um, you know, the number that I, that I want to get to. Um, yeah. Like I see, I see, you know, I've been, you know, just dibbling, dabbling in it. I know I kind of, when I first got in it, you know, I was just buy some stocks or random stocks and then all of a sudden it'll go up or I buy it in, in the morning and I go to work or do something and the next hour is, is down and I lose money. And so, you know, I, when, the, when COVID-19 hit, I basically said, all right, I had bought some Snapchat because I was like, all right, Snapchat is going, it's dirt cheap right now. I know it, it was a pretty good company. I know it struggled for a little bit and I just bought some and just let it set. And of course I didn't check it. I wasn't really on it. Cause I don't, I was, like I said, I wasn't really, you know, into the stocks like that, like heavy, not paying attention a lot. And I go and open it up one day and I'm like, whoa, whoa, like what happened? And so it goes from $6 and it's up to 20 something dollars. And I see, I see what you're saying, like holding on to it. And because, you know, I, I'm thinking about when you're saying trade, I'm thinking about you get in, get out, get in, get out, get in and get out. But when you, you know, you're holding it more long term, you can kind of see that, that your investment kind of grows a little bit, you know, yeah. and we'll take a step, take a step back for people who probably have never been into the stock market. So how do you go about, you know, what's the first steps? Like what apps are you using like to get involved with brokers and things like that to kind of help somebody who doesn't really have a lot of capital kind of get in on it. And then like trying to get some of these free apps to kind of get people up and going when it comes to, you know, dealing with stocks. Okay, yeah, so um, one of the ones that I, that I uh, started out with um, that I recommend to a lot of people that are just starting is Robinhood. Um, it's, it, it started out mobile platform only. And so it's the, the user interface is very simplistic. Even though they, they moved to a desktop uh, version of it now, it's still simplistic and easy, easy to follow because they, they built on top of a mobile platform. Uh, and so I suggest for anybody that's starting out, use Robinhood. Um, they do commission-free uh, trades, so you can buy and sell without paying a commission that your larger and more well-known uh, brokerages uh, charge. Um, and I mean, it's, you know, literally it fits in the palm of your hand. You know, I can, if I want to look up a certain company, um, I could put it on my watch list. Um, I can create one.